So for those of you who watch a video of the Mini at Atlanta Motor Sports Park, you know that one of the things that I really didn't like is I had no idea what my oil pressure was and what my oil temperature was on track. So before the Mini's second track day, we're going to go ahead and install our auto meter oil pressure and oil temperature gauges. Now I selected these gauges specifically because number one, I wanted an auto meter gauge. I trust their gauges. They've worked really well for me in the past. And number two, I wanted one that matched the Mini gauge as much as I possibly could. So I needed a silver face. I needed a chrome bezel here and I needed an orange needle. Now the mini one has a little bit of silver right in the center of the needle. They will look pretty darn close, close enough to the fact that it's not going to really stick out on the car. Now these are their Pro Comp line, but it's a Pro Comp Marine, so it's designed for a boat. The nice thing about these being designed for a boat is they have a pretty short sweep. It's a lot more similar sweep that you would have on a factory gauge, whereas aftermarket gauges might come all the way from 7 o'clock here and go around to 5 o'clock. This one, it's only got this short sweep. It's going to be probably from about 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and it's going to stay mostly in the middle. So it should be really nice for me to easily glance down. It should blend into the dash pretty well. So this is the easy part. Picking out gauges, super easy. We've got these Alta gauge pods, which specifically screw into two screws on the back of the mini tachometer. So they'll just sit on either side of the tackle sit right in the middle. Super easy install. It's not the highest quality piece of equipment I've ever seen, but I think it will work really well in the car. So gauges, that part was easy. The difficult part for the mini is the fact that this is the mini oil pressure sensor. So this is your dummy gauge. So if you have no oil pressure, this will turn the light on on the dash. But this is going to be our access point for the oil. As you can see, this is a pretty large gauge. This is a 3 8 NPT thread. And normally, this is what an aftermarket gauge looks like. It is a 1 8 NTP thread. So as you can see, holding them side by side, it is a huge size difference. And that's what we're going to have to use for our aftermarket gauges. Most gauges use this thread pitch. So we've got both our oil pressure sender and our temperature sender. They both use the same thread pitch, much smaller. So we're going to have to step down to that somehow. So we're going to need a way to hook up these three sensors so that we still have our factory dummy gauge. We've got the pressure gauge and the temperature gauge. Well, I have some bad news and good news. The good news is we figured this all out before I posted this video. The bad news is this setup actually did not work. So I did make this gap bigger. This gap is about twice what it was when I took it off the engine. It drove perfectly fine while I was driving around on the street and made it all the way to Roebling Road, which is about two hours from my house. But at some point during my first 30 minute session, about 20 minutes through, this cracked and started leaking oil at the bottom of the car and created a huge little smoke screen behind me. So I had to pull into the pits, figure out where this was, get this all out, and just put the factory piece back in. Now, while this was in, oil pressure worked perfect. I had no doubts about that. The oil temperature, it did start to go up on track. However, it stayed at like 140 when we were on the road. I think because this is so far away from the oil, even though the oil will heat up and work its way out here, there is a lot of surface area here for the heat to dissipate. So I don't know if you're gonna get an accurate oil temperature. So while this setup will work, I think part of it is I just got unlucky on this pipe here. I think you get it to work with a stronger pipe or even a shorter pipe, and maybe if this was a little bit lighter. But at the same time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a different setup which is ditching all of this entirely except for the sensors of course and what we'll do is use this threaded adapter here to replace the drain plug on the engine so this will become our drain plug so this is an m14 times 1.5 which is actually stamped on there and that is the thread pitch of the engine drain plug and then what we'll do is thread in our temperature sensor into this so we have a temperature sensor in the oil pan which is where i would want it ideally anyway of course you can drill and tap the oil pan i don't want to do that i might do that eventually but for now this works perfectly all i have to do is unhook this one wire and then i can thread this out luckily the mini has the drain plug on the side of the oil pan so this is tucked up out of the way it's going to be safe i'll show you guys in just a second but it should give lots of room for this to work. It's also conveniently facing backwards, so wire will run under the engine. I'll get it tucked up out of the way of zip ties. I think this will work perfect. The only thing is I'm gonna lose the magnetic drain plug I installed, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I would rather have my oil temperature than a little tiny magnet that 
is very helpful and it's a good thing to have, but with the mini and the exposed oil filter, I should be able to check the filter each time I drain the oil and look for metal flakes, so it shouldn't be too much of a loss. And then for the oil pressure, what I'm gonna do is use this 3 8 to 1 8 NTP adapter here, and what I'll do is use that plug in the oil sensor directly into the back of the engine block and we're going to be ditching the factory idiot switch all together. So I will not have that light on at all because if I have oil pressure I will know it through the gauge. I don't need the idiot switch. What we're going to do is wire that. I'm not sure how that wires so I'm going to double check that. Got everything set up and ready to go. Oil is drained out of the car. I have already taken out the factory pressure switch out of the back of the block like I showed you earlier in the video with version 1. What we're going to do is use a 19 millimeter socket and screw in this adapter into the back of the block to replace the factory pressure switch. And then I will screw this in by hand into the port here. The reason I don't have it screwed on already is so I can screw this in using the socket instead of having to use a wrench. It's very tight back there. I did check this. You can unplug this sensor while the engine is running and the light does not come on the dash. The car does not change in any way. So it seems to be that the way this works is when there is no oil pressure, it grounds out the circuit and the light comes on. As long as it is seeing some sort of pressure, it's fine. So if it's unplugged, it's the same thing as seeing pressure. It's an open circuit. It doesn't matter. I don't have to do any wiring. All I did was wrap the end of the plug on the car side with a plastic bag. I zip tied it tight and then tucked it under the heat shield so it's fully out of the way. I'm going to go ahead, reach over the top, get that screwed in, and I will show you a shot once it is in place. To show you where you're going to be working from from the top side, here is where the factory oil filter plugs in. We have that out of the way because, of course, we have to drain the oil to do this job. When you release the sensor, it's going to be plugged into this green wire right here and this little red switch. You're going to have to push from the driver's side to push it out. You can try to get a screwdriver on it, but it's just easier to reach around and push this out. What it's going to do is allow the switch to come off. This is a little safety latch so that it doesn't come off on its own and you think your car doesn't have oil. With the camera higher up in the engine bay, you can see where the oil filter is there on the right and the plug is going to go in the bottom left of the screen in that hole right there. So we have the heat shield all the way on the left and that's what we're trying to get past. I am going to try and see if I can bend it out of the way a little bit, but obviously it is there for a reason, so I don't want to mess with that. We can see where the drain plug would plug in, but we've got our adapter here and the temperature sensor. I've got the wire running off to the side. It's got plenty of ground clearance tucked in here over by the fan and runs up back to where the original wire was. So as I change my oil, I'll just change out the crush washer. There is no sealant or anything on the threads. It's just a crush washer like a normal drain plug. So it looks really nice, very quality piece. And I think this is gonna work just perfect. Everything is up and out of the way, so I don't have to worry about that. So all we have to do now is finish up with the pressure sensor and we should be good to go. Well, unfortunately, the oil pressure sensor here is too large of a diameter. So when I try to screw it into the back of the engine, part of the exterior here is hitting part of the engine block. So there's just not enough clearance back there. Maybe if the engine was out or if the subframe was still down, I could maybe work something out. But instead, what we've gone with is this simple aluminum bracket with a hose clamp holding on our pressure sender here. We've got a barb, which is a quarter inch, and then we have a quarter inch barb with the 1 8 NTP that I screwed into the adapter that I already put into the engine. And then we have some hose that will connect the two. So this will be mounted remotely off of the engine and we'll hook it up. It should run like normal. If you're using a mechanical gauge, option number four will work perfect. You won't have this big pressure unit. This will actually be inside of the gauge and you'll have a hose running oil directly in. And if you're using a more modern electrical sensor, it's probably a lot smaller, similar in size to the factory unit. I'm using this one because it works with the gauge I've got that matches the gauge face for the factory unit as closely as possible. That was my main motivation. So just keep that in mind. You're going to want to run a mechanical gauge or you're going to want to run a modern electric gauge. Air core, probably not going to work for you if you want to have it screwed directly into the back of the engine block. All right, so as you guys can see, here's our final product. This bracket right here is bolted up to the faux firewall and then we've got it holding our pressure sensor wire plugged in and hose running to the back of the engine. The only thing I had to do was add a grounding strap to go from the engine mount right here over to the bracket because this is designed to ground to the engine block. 
when you've got the sensor screwed in. So when it was isolated on the rubber, you had no connection to the engine, so you had no ground. So all you have to do is ground it in some way, shape, or form, and everything works perfectly. While it doesn't look quite as stock as I wanted it to, it is definitely working perfectly. So this is how it's going to stay. So here's another shot under the car. So we have the two signal wires hooked up. This is actually a wire that I just had in my stash of other wires, but the provided wire is nowhere near long enough. It's kind of a DIY universal kit, so you have to provide some of your own wires and fixtures. So I just happen to have these terminals, the heat shrink, and I was able to connect them both, and I can run one single wire that is two separate wires. But I've got to run through the bottom of this little box here where the ABS pump sits. It goes up and across, and then through a hole in the firewall. So I've got them nice and tucked up out of the way. I've got it zip tied to this flexible line here. So it's going to vibrate a little bit, but nothing is too hard mounted. It'll give the line some room to flex before the wire bends and fatigues. So I've got it routed on the inside of this box all the way over to the driver's side. I left a little extra wire here, again, just for some slack in the system to keep things from getting fatigued and broken. And it's running through a small hole. There's a big grommet right here which passes all of the ECU wiring and a very large power cable from the battery. I just poked a little tiny hole through that and fed the wire through and it's now underneath the dash. Now that we have the wiring run from the sensors all the way up into the cabin and we have it under the dash, I'll show you how we ran it up to where the tack is in just a second. But I wanted to go ahead and assemble everything on the desktop. It was a little bit easier out here on my bench. So I could get everything lined up, go test fit in the car, come back, make sure that the gauges were where I wanted. This one over here in the passenger side is a little bit higher up than on the driver. But it's just the way the dash is shaped inside the car. There's a little interference in the back, so I had to slightly stagger them. It's really barely noticeable, especially once you're in the car. When I flip this around in just a second, I'll show you how the gauges are held in. Like I told you before, there's the plastic outer area, then there's the gauge here inside, and in between them there's just a piece of silicone hose, almost like you would use for a radiator, that is wrapped around the gauge, and this little tunnel right here is tapered, so it's larger in the back than it is in the front, and you just press the gauge in from the back until it gets nice and tight. So you can adjust this infinitely of how deep or far out you want these gauges to sit you can also clock them infinitely however it is a little bit of a tedious process of figuring out where everything goes once you get it set it should be fine so overall I'm happy with it a little bit expensive I think they were $30 per piece maybe 35 so it's a little expensive for what you're actually getting but they work and it's really the only option unless you want to make something custom and that's kind of difficult for the Mini. It's not like a normal car, but there's a lot of room to drill holes in the dash or something like that. So we'll go ahead and flip this around back and show you what the back looks like and how I've got everything wired up. So the way this attaches to the back is you've got this little arm here and they give you a lock washer and a longer screw than the factory piece. So these just sandwich in between the tachometer and the actual mount. So it does work very nicely. One thing I would recommend doing is once you get it exactly where you want it so you can take these back off and on multiple times without having to figure out where it's supposed to go, take a silver sharpie and draw around the end here on the back of the tack and it'll give you a nice area to line up to. Same thing for the gauges. What I did was there's a little bump here. I'm not really sure what it's for. I think it's just for looks. But I lined the edges of that up to the gauge and drew with black sharpie on the back of the gauge so I could see exactly where I had the gauge clocked inside the housing. So if I ever need to take the gauge out, I can quickly pop it right back in. Same thing with the silicone on the gauge itself. Just draw a black line around on either side showing you how deep the gauge and the silicone were set up. So again, you can easily put everything back exactly where it was if you ever have to take it apart. The wiring in these is pretty simple. I can wire all these together nice and easy. So you have the lights ground right here, the black on the outside, the white on the inside is the power for the light, which I'm going to hook up to my headlight fuse. So when I turn my headlights on, the lights for these will turn on like every other light in the car. The ground wire right here is using the same ground post as the gauge. And I've got those two grounds from that side team here in the middle with the two grounds from the other side, one ground wire, which will go to a common ground source somewhere on the chassis. I haven't picked that yet, but we'll do that soon. Then we have this white wire, which is again, these two lights teed together, which will go to a headlight. And then we have our power wire, which will go to ignition switch. So the gauges turn on when the car is turned on. 
Now, there's a little bit of insulation here, this uh, wire loom. It's not necessary. I'm not even sure if you can see this when you're in front of the car looking inside the dash. I'm going to double check and see what this looks like. I might kind of cover these up or see if I can get something here black to cover this up. I've got zip ties right here, which you cannot see at all from the front. It just should keep everything in place just as the car bounces around and everything settles. I've got enough room here so when I get it close to the dash, I can slide the sensor wire up here, bolt it to this little post, pull the line back through the dash, and then everything will be set to go. I'm not going to pull these tight. I'm going to leave them loose just because I want to be able to get that back out without having to cut the zip tie off every time. But as you can see, pretty simple, four wires. These three right here, and then the one common wire coming up that carries the two sensor wires. On these gauges, you have the option of using a spade connector or an eyelet. I went for the eyelet because it's a little bit more compact. And even on this passenger side here, I had to flatten out the spade terminals so I could get it as tight to the dash as I possibly could. They're still functional. There's still enough room to put a spade connector on it if I need to use that in the future, but I don't see any reason why I would. For the ignition and the light, I'm going to use an Adafuse which basically plugs into a fuse block where the fuse was, and then you have two areas for a fuse to go into the piece. One is going to be a fuse for the light, and one is going to be for whatever the fuse was originally designed for. I've used them to great success on my 350Z, and I think it's a lot better than splicing into a wire, because I'm not messing with the factory wiring at all. I can easily remove it, so if I don't like these gauges, or if I sell the car and the people don't want them, I can easily take them out, and no one will ever know they were even there. And then, of course, for the ground, I'll just put a little eyelet connector on the back of it, and I can connect it wherever I find a good spot on the car. So this is the pedestal that the tachometer normally bolts down to, and this is the connector for it. Right here, we have the connector for the temperature sensor, and then we have the pressure switch right here. And then, of course, we have that wire I was telling you I was going to use to guide the other ones through. So it's already fed through under the dash. I'll tape the other ones to it, and I can pull it from under the dash and take it through this little hole here and this rubber liner that goes around the back of the steering column. So everything will be nice and flush. It'll be hidden behind the tachometer, so you won't be able to see anything. It should look very professional. So here under the dash, you can see this is where the panel would connect. And right here, out of the steering column, we've got the sensor wires and my guide wire coming through. We'll be able to take it over here to the fuse block that's right down here by your dead pedal. And then the other wire comes up to that main grommet that is above your brake pedal. So we've got a lot of room here under the dash. We've got a lot of great access to it. And we only had to remove one panel. We didn't even have to remove a single bolt. So it's actually pretty easy. So here we have our Adafuse plugged into the fuse box. I used a fuse for the radio, which is fuse F10. So it provides power when the key is all the way turned on. And I'll show you how to check that it worked in just a second before we start the car. Unfortunately, they did not have a fuse on the Mini that controlled the lights on the dash. And because the headlight fuse is a very different style of fuse, because it's a large 50 amp fuse, we were not able to use that. So I'll show you the alternative that we did. That way the backlight for the gauges only turn on when I turn the headlights on. So unfortunately, I did have to splice into a wire, which is not what I wanted to do, but it's a wire that's not very important, so I'm not overly concerned about it. This is one of the side marker lights that sits over here on the corner of the bumper. I've blacked mine out, so I don't even have a bulb in it anymore. It's not useful for me. I've just got it blocked off with some tape to keep water out of it, but it serves no purpose for me. I keep it tucked in the bumper. Even then, if this goes out, unless it's some specific law in your area that they're really going to be harping on, I see no reason why you can't splice into this wire because it's not going to cause any issue with the light. But if for some reason it goes bad and it causes corrosion in the wire, you're not losing a super vital part of your car like your headlights. So if you watch the oil pressure gauge, the oil temperature does it as well. But as I turn the key to the on position, so we have the gauges have come to life. They're ready to go. And then if I turn it all the way and I've got the headlights turned on, they light up when everything else does. And if I turn the lights back off, everything goes back off. So they work perfectly. So we'll go ahead and drop it down off the jack stands and we will get out on our drive. Here is a shot of the gauges inside the car. I wanted to do a shot in the evening where I could turn on the little lights for the gauges and show you how well it kind of matches with the rest of the car. So the font looks very similar, the silver face of the gauges, all the numbers being in black, even the orange glow matches the orange over here. And then if I turn this off, 
you can see it matches just as well. You have those chrome bezels. And if you look over here, you've got the two air vents around the larger circle in the middle for the Speedo. And then we've got kind of the same motif going over here. So I think it matches really, really well. We've got our oil temperature over here. We're hovering, if you look at it straight on, somewhere around 185, 190 degrees, which is perfect. And then over here, oil pressure. So we're idling at a little over 10 PSI. So really, I am extremely happy with it. I think everything looks really nice, very factory, and they're working perfectly in their new vocations. So I'm very, very happy with it. So hopefully the mounting vocations that I picked and the way I did it will work out for you guys, especially if you're using a gauge with a smaller oil pressure sender. You should be able to plug in your temperature down into the oil pan through that adapter for your drain plug very easily. And then same thing, screwing your oil pressure sender directly into the back of the block instead of using the factory pressure sender that is literally just for a dummy light. I really have no complaints with this setup. I think it is pretty much as perfect as it's going to get. So of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop those in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week.